know, leader, can what we wear to work help to make our clients and customers comfortable and more inclined to buy from us? You betcha. I've got something different for you today. An incredible style coach joins me and we talk about the controversial topic of appearance and apparel in the workplace. Yeah, we're going to talk about those uncomfortable but very important topics about clothing and appearance and how they can directly link to how everyone feels about their experience with your brand, the business, your team, and you. Now, do you want a dress code that is on brand and welcomed by your team, but worry that some people might not abide by it, or they may simply not be able to afford it? Or are you disappointed with team members who don't take care of their uniforms? Now, you might be uncomfortable with parts of our discussion today, but I can guarantee you that you'll walk away with lots to consider. So whether you have a brick and mortar, a remote team, or you've got multiple locations, you've likely bumped up into the challenge of someone not meeting your standards and expectations for how they show up at work. It's concerning on many levels, and today we're getting into all of them, including how fashion at work can directly impact team performance and how it can also impact your clients and customers' buying decisions. Oh, and be sure to get your free quiz that our guest is making available to you. You'll want it. Grab the link in the show notes. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. If you are a woman who owns a small business and you'd like to learn how to lead your team so they don't need you to hold their hand, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Shelley Warren. I've led winning teams in retail, innovative technical teams at a Fortune 50 corporation, and coached many remote teams to win at work. And in case you're wondering, no one escapes team troubles, including me. You already know that the people side of running your business can be tough. I'm here to help. So let's jump into today's episode with a little reminder that the team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. Angela Foster is a sought after style coach and personal shopper who has 20 years of experience as a former executive in the fashion and beauty industry. Today, she guides small business owners and corporate clients to feel great about themselves because of what they wear and how it fits and flatters their body shape, their brand, their workplace culture, and of course, their goals. She's got some definite opinions about fashion and your well-being. She also has tons of tips to help you save time and money so you're not standing there, peering into your closet, struggling to figure out, what am I going to wear today? You know, I recently hired Angela to create a series of four videos for my clients to help them feel more confident and prepared for the stage, media, or branding shoots. She also provided incredible insight for my clients to help them foster a workplace that was on brand for them, whether it was a traditional brick and mortar or a hybrid with remote teams. She shared so much insight about fashion at work specifically for my clients whose workplaces may have a casual vibe with uniforms or my clients who have this super professional workplace. Those videos were full of tips and I knew I wanted to bring her onto the podcast to share here with you, my listeners. I can't wait for you to meet Angela and hear what she has to say about the common challenge of keeping yourself and your team consistently showing up on brand and building those deeper relationships with your clients and customers. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast, Angela. Thank you for having me, Shelly. I have been looking forward to this for weeks now. You know you're one of my favorite people, so anytime I get to hang out with you, it's like the best part of my day. I'm happy to have some time with you because I'm an avid fan of yours on LinkedIn. I love the conversation starters that you kick off on that platform. But it's also for me another chance to get to see you in person because you did come in and do a series of videos for us that were just so well received inside the leadership lab. And I'm I'm thrilled to be able to have you on the podcast now because, you know, not everybody gets a chance to look at those videos that you created for us for clients. So as listeners, though, you have so much knowledge about 
fashion itself, branding, and how to build a bridge between the two of them so that you really are walking about your day, feeling great about who you are, the business that you own. And for me as well, I'm always very sensitive to wanting to make sure that the people that work alongside you also feel comfortable and and ready to go and feel like they're fitting in at work and all that stuff. So I've got a million things to talk to you about today. And I'm I'm just fascinated about the level of expertise that you have. So tell us, what are you seeing out there in terms of fashion in the workplace? Because you do a lot of private coaching, you're a personal shopper, you do a lot of personal styling, and you you know, you work with those high performing, high achieving women that are building brands within their businesses. They're speaking on stage, they're doing media coverage, they're in front of the camera constantly. You know, they're growing and scaling their businesses and therefore they're up leveling their brand. So you do a lot of work with those individuals. And many of those individuals also have teams and they have workplaces, whether it's a remote team situation or hybrid or an actual brick and mortar. So what are you seeing out there? What's happening out there? I love this question so much because you're seeing everything. And I don't know if you realize it, but I'm going to say the middle to the last part of last year, I started, I took on some corporate clients um, which actually turned into retainer clients. So now I, you know, visit them, you know, and an update. I think one of the challenges is, you know, it was starting to get super duper casual before the pandemic. Anyways, then the pandemic in three months, six months, whatever, work from home, all of a sudden everybody came back to the workplace and they were still wearing yoga pants and slouchy t-shirts or whatever, you know, whatever the situation was. So then all of a sudden these people leaders looked at this and said, okay, well, number one, we saw what our, what work from home and what really casual and all of that did to productivity and morale and team spirit and all of that. So we need to, you know, turn it back around. It's so difficult though, right? When you have an existing team and all of a sudden you're saying, well, I know you got by with this for a year or however, <laughs> what, and now we're going to flip the switch on this and we're going to get back to normal and all of that. So it's really put people leaders into a difficult situation. So a couple of things, and because I do, you know, like ongoing work and all of that, I, I want to say there's two specific things that your listeners and your coaching clients could start immediately. The first one is, is to really be able to articulate what they want the dress code to look like. So, so many times if they do have a written dress code and 99% of them don't, but if they do, it is so outdated that, I mean, it was written in 1987. And I mean, they're still talking about like power suits with shoulder pads. Well, which are both back now again, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, they were like from the original one. So really be able to articulate it and challenge yourself not to come up with something like business casual, which zero people on the planet know what that means. Like nobody knows. So that can be difficult, right? Like if you all of a sudden try to create anything out of air, it's like, it's always a little bit of a struggle. So what I've found with my clients is easiest is to say what you don't want. So for example, I want to have a business casual office, whatever. Okay. So what's not acceptable in your version of business casual? Are flip-flops okay? Or are they not okay? Is denim okay? Is it not okay? So start with a list of what you don't want to see happen and go from there. And then all of a sudden, once you have all the stuff that you're like, I never, ever want to see any of this in my office again, then it makes it a whole lot easier to create a dress code. It's like I said, it's such a dress code is such a tough image standards, image guidelines, whatever you want to call it. It's such a tough thing because it's so personal to that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when your boss comes to you and you feel like you are doing an amazing job, and then all of a sudden she says, yeah, but you look a disaster because you come to work a wrinkled up mess and your shoes have holes in them or whatever. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, but doesn't my performance outrank my appearance? which is a whole which is a whole other topic but it's such a, a difficult situation and to be quite honest the employee doesn't want to put their boss in that position either or their leader or their manager or whatever like nobody wants to put their boss in a difficult situation or to have that difficult conversation so 
what is can be helpful is to say there well there's a couple of ways to do this i had one client who she um, has a law firm and she asked for people to volunteer for an image guideline task force that's not what she called it she called it something sexier but she had somebody from you know she had a lawyer she had a paralegal she had a secretary so she pulled from each of the different ones they got together and then with a little well quite a bit of guidance from her actually <laughs> then they came up with a dress code but then they felt the team the rest of the team felt like okay this isn't you know like so and so just like coming down with a hammer and saying we all look awful or whatever this was like a group of peers that know what we have to do, you know, know how cold it gets in the office, know that the concrete floors make high heels difficult and uncomfortable, you know, all of those things. So it really started off as like, it came from a good place from there. So to do, and and that's going to look different from, for all sorts of different industries, but, um, but to do some sort of a, your version of a task force is, is a good place to start with some parameters. I like the idea of getting the team involved because now then they get to share their point of view and they have a higher level of ownership for the outcomes. The thing with the parents that's, you know, that we just have to keep reminding ourselves about is that it's it's a sticky topic. There's arguments on both sides, right? So there's the team members who want to bring their whole selves to work each day and they are resisting round peg in a square hole situation. Like they're, they're resisting being force fit into a particular style that might not align perfectly with their personality or their culture. The other argument is, where am I supposed to get the money for this? Right. Oh, right. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a team member. I make X amount of dollars. Where am I supposed to get the funds to overhaul my wardrobe? So there's those arguments. But then on the flip side, I feel for the CEO and the founder that says, I've been building this brand for X money years. We have this type of clientele. Part of the comfort that our clients and customers feel is that when they're interacting with us, they feel cared for. They feel that there's a group of professionals that are, you know, have their goals in mind. Um, oh, and by the way, you see our website, you see our social media presence, you see who we are. So when you applied for this role, yes, we can assume that you did a little bit of research on who, who's this company that I'm applying for this job for, and you would have seen that. So I do feel like there needs to be some sort of balance between the team members' resistance and then the CEO and the founder's expectations. There needs to be a level of rationale there. However, I'm all about clarity because nothing's more off-putting than having someone come to work, geared up, ready, ready to do a worthwhile day, only to be confronted about their attire. And I was always that girl. Like I was always the girl that got asked to, could you please go and speak to him? about that t- that t-shirt he's wearing on today. Can you please go and speak to her about that whale tail? Oh my goodness. On the back of her pants. You know, can you please take her aside and talk to her about that cleavage? I was always the one that had to go and intervene and host these adult conversations with these sticky conversations. So I've been there a million times and messed it up, flubbed it up a million times, asked for the do-over, went back again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But at the end of the day, most people appreciate having that type of feedback given to them, especially if it's positioned in the sense around the idea of, you're really great at this. And I want people to continue to see you as someone who's really great at this, but we're distracting them. We're undermining your reputation simply by what you what you chose to wear today. Let's not do that anymore. Let's let's not let's not do that anymore. Let's have people focus on the work that you provide, the expertise that you have, the mastery that you're developing, not have you be a brunt of jokes or water cooler talk or snide comments about your appearance. Let's let's not do that anymore. Women have enough on their plates. Let's not add to it. Um, but at the same sense, I've had that same conversation with many guys that are 
too casual, like just simply too casual at work. And then for them, it's more of a conversation of, well, I don't have clothes like that. Like, I don't even know where to begin, you know? And then I would literally say, well, let me jump online. Let me just show you. Let's give you some visuals as to, you know, a couple of golf shirts that you could purchase or a pair of pants, you know, let's, let's kind of, I'll give you some ideas, but it's a, it's a hot topic in the workplace. And now we have hybrid workplaces and we all lived through that era of everyone being on Zoom. And there was all kinds of jokes about the suit on the top. Right. And the, party on the top. Yes. Party on the top, basically nothing on the bottom, all that kind of stuff. We went through all that. And we learned from it. We definitely learned from it. But yes, how are you working with your clients to come up with what those appearance standards are. And then once you've got the appearance standards, how do you pull them? There was so much goodness in that, in what you had to say. Absolutely. The other way to look at this whole thing with the whole, I want to bring my whole self to work, that whole thing. Because one of my corporate clients is a plastic surgeon's office. And so that's that like weird balance, right? Like we're medical, but yet we have a lot of stuff done and we're high glam and the whole thing, right? There is always a way to bring your own personality into it, even if you wear scrubs and a lab coat. So if somebody comes to work and says, you know what, like this just doesn't jam with me. Like I want to be able to wear whatever, you whatever. You're just not like bust out your creativity and really identify what your personal style is because it's not looking like a schlub, right? So, and figure out a way to make it your own and to feel really good about it. One of the doctors in the op- in the plastic surgeon's office, she wears the coolest shoes. And I don't know if you've ever seen them before, but they're called, I think they're called Z-coils. And they're actually, I'm going to say orthopedic, but I know that's not the right word, but they're for like, uh, you know, like to alleviate pressure on your, but they're not like dance goes, you know, like clocks or anything like that. They have this huge coil that you can see in the heel so they're at, they actually look like heels, even though they're super duper comfortable, but that's her jam. Like that's what she wears. Every single, I've never, ever seen her when she didn't have a really fun pair of those on. So there's all, my point being is that there's always a way to like express your fun, funky, personal style and all of that. So the other thing that you said that I thought was a super good point is the whole, like you knew what our company was about when you started and all of that. It is always easier. And that's why one of the things when I work with corporate clients, the very first thing that we do is get that dress code down on paper so that you can start reviewing it during the interview process. And it's usually, you know, I say, listen, it, when they know it going in, it makes a whole different impression on the candidate. Not only that, but do you want to be a part of a company that has zero expectations and zero standards? Or do you want to be a part of like, a really cool bunch of people who are successful and look great and are having fun. I mean, I know which one I would want to go with, right? So I think sometimes we put some of our like, like we have those like, okay, but then they might say this. And that we, so we, you know, put some of that into the conversation before. And then the third thing I want to say is a hundred percent, Shelly, you have to have these difficult conversations when they know the employee knows that it's coming from a place of caring, like you are not, you know, you're not trying to be like the clothing police. You really want them to be successful and you are there to help them and support them. And it comes from a good place in your heart. They feel that. And it does put a different, a whole different spin on it. I think it's funny what you said about the guy thing. They just don't know. They don't know where to go. I mean, if they don't have a wife who does the shopping for him or whatever. I mean, they don't know where to go. And, you know, they don't, not all guys think about it a ton, right? So it's not something that they're going to Google. They don't. And find out what. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> and, you know, I've even had that conversation with guys that have said, well, yeah, but this is my jam. Like, I'm like, I know that you are an avid concert goer. I'm sure you have over a hundred black t-shirts in your drawers with various band paraphernalia from, you know, incredible concerts that you've seen over the years. And, and those are wonderful, but they don't meet our dress code here. And, and let me tell you why. And, and, you know, it's that whole idea of having people remember that at work, you want to be seen as someone like your work stands for who you are, not your appearance, 
there shouldn't be anything about you that is so distracting that it actually diminishes the value that you're bringing, the mastery that you have. And so, yeah, those conversations are always sticky too. But I am also a big fan, especially in the world of small business, to have more small business owners consider two things when it comes to appearance standards. So one is considering looking at a uniform. So one of the things that I know is prevalent, mainly more for women, but most women are freezing at work all day yes. because, yes. Of the, because of the air conditioning. So yes. I am a big fan of providing some sort of sweater, jumper if you're from the UK, um, or jacket, shacket if you've got a real casual workplace, but some sort of something. Maybe even it's a wrap. Maybe it's a, some sort of on-brand, maybe even with a logo, with your branding colors, but some sort of outerwear that if you're cold at work, you put that on and it's still, it still meets the standards for sure. I, I'm a big proponent of that. The other thing that I've worked with a couple of my clients on is providing a stipend for clothing. And, and I'll tell you why. So this becomes really important, especially if you have branded photos taken a couple of times a year or even once a year. It, to, it's, very, it's seen as very supportive to team members. If you were to roll out this, hey, we're going to do a refresh of the website. We're going to get new team photos taken. We're going to get some really cool action shots here, you know, really wanting to showcase who we are and what it is that we do here and really create that comfortability for our dear clients. And I realize that for some of you, you may now be worried about what am I going to wear? What am I going to wear? And so here, you know, we put together a style guide with some suggestions and we're going to be providing a stipend, you know, twice a year um, in order to offset the cost of this as well. I think it's incredibly helpful for anytime you're asking your team member to travel with you to go to a conference or if you have you know, if one of your visibility strategies is to go to different, I'm going to call them fests, you know, like you're going to some sort of fest where you have a vendor booth right. and you're going to be there engaging with people. Yes. Uh, we need to provide people clothing mm -hmm. to wear to those events. Do not hope that they show up with something that is on brand and appropriate. Let's let's have them stand out in those big crowds, but in a good way. I was gonna, I was just gonna say in the best way possible. Yeah, yeah, by giving them what to wear. And then they can stop worrying about what they have on. Yep. And start focusing more on engaging with the public that's coming through at those festival events. You know what I mean? Those kind of big events. I do. One of my clients, she owns a driveway company. She was at this huge home and garden show thing that with her with her team. And the booth was, I mean, when she told me how much, and I don't even know how the topic came up, honestly, I, I hope I didn't ask her. But the, the amount of the booth that she paid was, I was blown away. Oh, yes. To your point, what is a $45 cute t-shirt, long sleeve polo, whatever, compared to what she, you know, paid for the booth. The thing about it is too, is when in regards to logo wear, it's so much cuter than it used to be. It doesn't have to be, yeah, it doesn't have to be like a shapeless boxy men's t-shirt. You can get cute, tailored, long sleeve, very, you know, soft, soft, the whole thing where that they actually love to wear. The other thing that I'll say to your listeners, and it's definitely something to at least you know, like research a little bit. There are several big box retailers, department stores, specialty stores that when you talk to them and you say, hey, listen, you know, like this is what I'm putting my team through. They're going through an image coaching. They're going to like, we're going to come up and update our image standards and our image guidelines. And would you be willing to help me out with like a one day discount pass mm -hmm. for my team so that they can purchase anything else that they might need or something like that? You'd be amazed, especially in this day and age, brick and mortar is willing to like really work with local merchants, entrepreneurs, the whole thing. So that's definitely something to think about too. I'm a fan of walking in to a brick and mortar and knowing immediately who is here to take care of me. Oh gosh. Who is here 
that I can ask a question to. I don't care whether it's a shop, a salon, a spa, a dental office, a doctor's office. I want to see who is the team, who is the team, whether including restaurants. I want to see who works here, who's on the team here. And, you know, I think sometimes for many, many years, a lot of those types of businesses kind of got away with name tags, right? Like right. you just put the name tag on the person and there's your uniform. You've got this name tag, but the name tag might not always be positioned so you can see. And then it got switched to lanyards. I don't know about you, but right. can you read someone's <laughs> name on a lanyard? It always looks like you're inappropriately looking yes, yes. somewhere on their body where they're not supposed right. to be, yes. Is there- uh, especially if you're short, like you and I are short. And so that's always awkward. And like, no one can read the dang lanyards. So I'm all about, if you're going to invest in lighting fixtures, merchandising, traffic flow, window decals, you know, if you're going to invest in, yeah, the aesthetics of your your brick and mortar, why wouldn't you invest in you know, everyone wears the same blazer or everyone wears the same, you know, long sleeve, wrinkle free, fitted blouse. I mean, there's so, as you said, there's so many options out there. Yes. Why wouldn't you invest in that? And that becomes part of, I think it's part of the excitement when you onboard someone, you know, oh, and here's your uniforms or here's your two blouses and your pullover. You know, here's your summer blazer you know here's your winter blazer i think all of that are assets to the business they can all fall under those types of expenses right but the biggest thing is it creates this feeling of belonging for anyone that is on your team but it also creates this level of comfort when you've got people walking in they immediately know who's here to help me yep Well, when a guy in, well, they wear shorts down here, in brown shorts and a brown camp shirt comes to your door, you know it's the UPS guy. I mean, like there's a reason that highly successful companies say, this is our image, this is what we're going to do, right? Like it, I mean, it sort of becomes a joke, especially, you know what I mean? Especially with all the deliveries, like there's the UPS guy again, right? But I mean, it's totally, it's, it's totally worth it. And it was a good investment for them. I mean, it's the number one recognized uniform on the planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason why that they, you know, that they do that for them. So no, I I completely agree. And it's funny that you should say that because I was trying, when you were telling that story, I was like, I was just somewhere and I, and I'm trying to remember where, and I had no idea who worked there to your point. And I was trying to like find somebody to help. And I don't know, you know, like to your, they all have different colored t-shirts on and yes. So, and that's so irritating. Like when you plan out your day, you're like, oh good, I'm going to spend 20 minutes at Office Depot trying to find somebody who works here. Awesome. Okay. I'm not picking on Office Depot. I love Office Depot, but uh, that was just, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like that's not, that's mm-hmm. not the consumer experience most retailers want their clients to have, nor to your point, restaurants or anything else. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, completely agree. And I think these assets, because that's what they are, they're business assets. They're part of the onboarding package yep. that people receive as they join you in your business. And you can set some standards around it too, in terms of the care for the garment, you know, the ironing of the garment, like all of that stuff can then you can set standards for that as well. And then you can also be able to have a program where if something is damaged, it gets replaced or there's, you know, a replacement garments every two years or or whatever the, the plan is that you put together. But I think there's a lot to be said about appearance and how it impacts team performance because we don't want team members appearing to be underperforming or mediocre performers simply based on their perception that someone's going to have of them solely by their appearance. Um, Because man, I think we've all, all, I'll raise my hand on this too, (laughs) judge someone judge someone because they look a little disheveled today or you know it's all those kind of things where it can even it can even like ratchet to questioning who's the owner here like why would they have someone on on their team that is so off brand but you know the, but the, again there's this fine line between 
celebrating individuals for who they are as individuals and trying to create this aesthetic in the workplace that enhances your team performance, doesn't distract from it. I don't know if your Starbucks does this. My Starbucks, and I think it was probably maybe two or three weeks ago, their aprons changed from green to bright pink. And it was to launch a mango, papaya, you know, like some kind of crazy summer drink. And the very first, like, I got to the drive through and I was like, oh my gosh, I love your apron. What's the story? Mm. And she's like, oh, do you know what I mean? So it can also be used as a sales mar- and marketing tool because I'm sure I am not the only one that day that noticed that their aprons were not green. So, I mean, it's like a fun way to launch a new product or service yeah. and, and all of that. Mm. It's difficult to honor people as individuals and honor who they are and their culture and still have them intrinsically want Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to uphold your appearance standards. And I, it comes, in my mind, it comes all the way back to the interview process. So, and it it goes even further to the, to the role posting itself. I think it should say right in the role posting that you, you know, all team members, regardless of their title or position are expected to uphold our appearance or standards or our dress codes. Be specific. And you can talk about that in the interview and just really flush it out, flush it out deeply in that interview process to really find out, is this person comfortable with this? And, And it even helps go to the interview, role modeling your dress code, like to be able to say, you know, this is, this is how we dress here. This is exactly, if you were to join us next week, you know, you would be provided one shirt, one pair of pants, or, you know, we wear dark pants, a light colored shirt. And then you also get this outer jacket to be able to wear. Like You've just got to roll it all out, see if people are going to get excited about that or whether they're going to run the other way from it. And making sure also that the first time it's not, it's just not something that you can let slide. Mm -hmm. If there is a huge kerfuffle, you have to like immediately, because you know what happens today. I come to work in a wrinkled shirt tomorrow. It's a wrinkled shirt and wrinkled pants. And then Friday it's no makeup or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So, or whatever the situation is. So making sure that you get in front of that whole thing. In regards to, and I'm not picking on wrinkles, but but in regards to the whole wrinkled thing, and you were saying like, we don't want our people to be perceived as mediocre or whatever, but that's, I mean, subliminally, that's what happens is because, I mean, I'm looking at somebody and if I don't know them and I don't know how talented and smart and lovely and all of that, that they are, and I just look at them because let's be honest, we all judge. I mean, like, it's just intrinsic human nature. You can't get away from it, but but you look at that and you're like, okay, well, if she couldn't even be bothered to like steam her blouse today, how much effort is she going to put into my project or whatever it is that I'm purchasing from the company? I mean, there's just that subliminal thing that goes, well, gosh, she doesn't care enough about her appearance. I mean, like how much is she going to care about me and my business? So I just, I think there's that message that a lot of, especially younger workers don't, they're just, you know, like they haven't been, you know, exposed to enough stuff yet to be p- to pick up on, on that connection. And I think that is um, not saying anything, not coaching our younger team members uh, is probably the biggest disservice we can do because somebody coached us. Yes, absolutely. A lot of people coached us. Absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, speak, I shouldn't speak for you, but a lot of people coached me and helped me like, you know, navigate the whole thing. So for, for me not to do it now, it's just it's wrong. It's not paying it forward, which is what it's all about. So yeah, it's true. I really do. I have a, an eye for uniforms. Like I'm always looking at uniforms always. They always catch my eye. I'm always looking to recognize who the team is. And I'm always looking to match the brand to the aesthetic of what I'm experiencing here. And maybe that's just my own interest, but I don't think I'm that weird. I think people also do that, probably maybe not as deeply as I do, but I think people are doing that as well because it's that whole idea of you're going to hand money over for some sort of service or product. Am I comfortable to hand this money over to you or not? And I think we can shorten the buying decision when we consider all these other little nuances that factor in to making that buying decision. 
Okay. So you know how I love stats, especially when it comes to fashion and money and, and all of that. So two things with this, and I know you've heard me say this before, but I call it the 7-Eleven rule. And people make 11 decisions about us in seven seconds. So you can imagine when somebody is walking into my, my store for the very first time, or she's seen me on social for the very first time, before I've ever opened my mouth, before she even reads like the headline of my social media post or like clicks play on a video, she's already decided if I know what I'm talking about, if I'm like, be like scroll, just scroll on by this girl doesn't have anything to say. So it's so incredibly critical because in this day and age, there's just too much competition out there. It's too easy to keep like, keep scrolling by if you don't look the part of what it is that you do. And that looks different for everybody, right? Like, you know, a graphic designer, the expectation is going to be very different than an accountant or, you know, a lawyer or something like that. So, um, but that's just so critical. And then the second fun fact is it used to be, and I feel like it was 2019, women who were perceived as well-groomed made 12% more money than their peers in a similar job and that were not perceived as well-groomed, 12% more, which is a lot. Now listen to this though. This is the kicker. The same study was done last year. So in 2023, now they make 20% more, 20. Like that, when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is crazy pants. And here's what I think. And I, I'm dying to know what you think about this. So again, everybody comes back from work from home and all of that. And like, you know, this many people made a, you know, like 50% of the people made an effort before the pandemic. Now 25 people, 25% of the people make an effort. So now that 25% of people stands out even more than they did before. And which just elevates their perceived you know, responsibility and respectability and knowledge and, and all of that. But don't you think that's interesting? 20% more. 20% more. I think it's fascinating because it says loudly and clearly that, you know, you come to the workplace with a level of skills and expertise. Why not significantly increase your ability to earn a, a really nice living simply by doing a few basic things to care for your appearance. And it doesn't mean that you have to go extreme and, and you know, spend thousands of dollars on skincare and hair extensions and, you know, all the things. It doesn't mean you have to do that because although some people love that and that really is who they are, and that's really when they do feel their best, there's also many businesses where that would not fit their appearance standards, right? Right. That's such a good point. And I should have clarified. So with the well-groomed thing, it had nothing to do with how much money their clothes were. It was like a hair that was styled, a little bit of light makeup, clean pressed clothes that looked like it was actually part of an outfit that you didn't sleep in. Like it wasn't, I mean, really when you look at the standards, it's not that much. You're like, yeah. okay, I can do that. I can wash my hair. Yeah. You weren't asked to be a style influencer. Oh, exactly. Do the basic hygiene you know, the basic things that you can do to make to make it appear that you are, you know, that you keep keep care of yourself. That's really what it's about. Like, do you keep care of yourself? Because as you said earlier, if you look like you keep care of yourself, then I'm going to feel so much more confident that you're going to keep care of me. Um, and then in terms of the reason why I think people that are well-groomed are making more money, it's because of that. They know they can be you know, their employer knows that they can be front facing with the client. They know they can trust that clients and customers that are being attracted into the business feel more comfortable, feel more at ease and are and the buying decision is shortened. And, and that's that's really what it's all about, especially in this world of so much competition out there. Absolutely. And to, I mean, if you are going to pay for ten thousand dollar coaching package or you are going to pay for a $50,000 car, what, you know, whatever it is, you know, the higher you want to charge your clients, the better your team better look, right? Because if I'm looking at a bunch of rabble rousers that are just, you know, like all thrown together, and then she like hits me with a big ticket price, I'd be like, oh gosh, I just don't know. Cause y'all look a mess. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's human nature to look at the whole package and want to feel comfort 
around the whole package and confidence around the whole package. It takes a really mature, big person to look through that and, you know, hold a lot of grace for people that might not look like you, talk like you, show up in the world like you. And at the same time, we make buying choices based on our confidence to lay the money down. So regardless of who you are and what you stand for and how much how much you really are taking a stance that you want your team members to come in in every day and feel like they're bringing their whole selves to work. I think there are ways that you can still abide by the appearance standards, still uphold those dress codes and still be able to add a little bit of twist that says, this is who I am. This, this is who I am. And, and just get the best of both worlds. Of course. And maintain that higher level of salary that you want in the first place. Like why not put yourself out there in a way that will help you earn more money versus detract your earning power from you? Owning your own business, being an entrepreneur, being a found, it's hard work. Why make it any harder than it has to be? Like, you know, especially when it's something so easy to fix. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for all these conversations. I'm thinking about, you know, a lot of my clients, I tease them. I have a number of clients who I kind of joke that I call their team, Team Lovely, um, because I tease them about how gorgeous their team is. And I'll say, oh my gosh, I don't know where you're recruiting from. <laughs> I kind of joke, but it's not that. It's just that there's a brand, there's an aesthetic. She's attracting other people who are attracted to that, who says, oh, I will totally fit in there. Oh, these look like my kind of pals to hang around. Mm -hmm. And so it just continues to, to build upon that. And then on the same sense, I have other clients who have a very casual workplace, like super casual because they're, they're dentists, they're in people's mouths all day, or they're therapists and they're rolling around the floor with kids or, you know, they, they have a very casual workplace. And still they have appearance standards and they have dress codes and they bring the fun in with colors and fun little tweaks that they can do to really lighten the heaviness of what it is that they're doing all day and just adds that extra level of comfort and curiosity for their clients and customers that are coming in. So I've seen this, I've witnessed it, this on a wide variety of businesses and brands that I work with. I know it can be done and I know it can be done really well. I just think it's something that we need to just start talking about more and making it okay to have those uncomfortable conversations about it and just make it more mainstream and make it more normal to be part of what you talk about with your team every day. I do you think, I mean, I think about uh, my corporate clients and it does it, it does come at a certain point. You know, you first start your company and you're thinking like, oh, what are my brand colors? And where's my logo? And what's that, you know, and all that stuff. And that's terrific. But when they get to that point of growth where they're looking to hire people, or maybe they've made a couple of hires that haven't worked out, haven't been a good fit and all of that, that's when the whole, oh, I need some sort of an image guide, guideline for my people and for my team um, to avoid issues and concerns and conversations that we don't want to have and we don't want to waste time having. So it does come at a certain level of growth with the company, but the sooner that your listeners start thinking about it, like if they think about it before they ever make that first hire, my gosh, how much easier is their life going to be, right? So hopefully we got we got in front of some of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think we did. Okay, good. Tell our listeners, Angela, how can people get more Angela? Thank you for asking. And I do. I have a free gift for your listeners. You know, you know how I feel about body shape. Like great style all starts with knowing how to dress for your body shape and embracing what your shape is and and all of that. So I have a body shape quiz that you, and I think, and it's not like one of those a hundred questions. It's literally seven questions. It'll take you less than two minutes. You'll be redirected to a personalized video talking about the styles and silhouettes that work and the styles and silhouettes to stay away from. It is, it's just, it's such a game changer, Shelly. I, it was one of those stupid things that was on my to-do list for way too many months. And I finally like, got it wrapped up and all of that. And yes, yes. So it's been, it's been terrific. So they can get it at angelafoster.co forward slash Shelly with an I for you, my dear. 
Oh, thank you so much. So <laughs> AngelaFoster.co forward slash Shelly with an I. Oh my gosh, you're going to have tons of people checking that out. I love the idea that it's video based where you're showing them do this instead of that. And then the whole thing about body shape, it's just so important um, in terms of how clothes fit, how you feel moving in the clothing, whether you want to put that thing back on ever again. Um, you know, all those kind of things really matter. So you're such a great coach. Thank you. Knowing trends and fashion, but you're so good at helping your clients amplify the aspects of themselves that are that they love about themselves. And then, um, you know, being able to switch things up a little bit so that if there is a, something that they are self-conscious about, you're so great at helping them get past that. Thank you. Shelly, see, this is why I adore you. This is why you're one of my favorite women on the planet. Thank you so much. That was so kind. I, I hope so. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly how I want my clients to feel. So focus on what you love. It's more fun. Yes. Focus on what you love and, and get out there and move about the world. Don't uh, hide. Don't hide. Yep. Get out there. Spread your get word. Out there. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for being my partner today and having this difficult conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye. Well, how do you feel now about fashion in your workplace? Is it a challenge to keep yourself and your team on brand? Was there something that rubbed you the wrong way? Was there something that got you all fired up to take action on? Maybe it was an idea about providing an article of clothing that would help your team actually be on brand. Are you thinking you're better prepared to have a difficult conversation with someone who's not meeting your appearance and apparel standards? You know, I hope Angela and I spark some ideas and some further conversation about fashion in the workplace and how a few tweaks can greatly shorten your clients' and customers' buying decisions while still matching your brand and the team culture that you're fostering. I wanna encourage you to download Angela's Body Shape Quiz at angelafoster.co slash Shelly, and that's Shelly with an I. And be sure to connect with her on Instagram or LinkedIn. You'll be glad you did. Those links are in the show notes. You know, joining the Leadership Lab could be your very next best step to finally knowing how to lead. So your team turnover settles down. People know exactly what they're being paid to do and the results you've been wanting your team to deliver actually happens. I've got the tools, frameworks, and coaching experience to help you to stop being disappointed in your team and instead start feeling great about who you hire, who you promote, and who you hand over the reins to because they're truly capable and happy to commit to bringing your vision alive for your clients and customers. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today.